I'm just interested, how did it come about because you are one of the contributors to this book? It came about, Erin called me at home, um, she got my number and name through Vent TV actually. Really? Yeah. Inside that, are you one of the contributors? I am, I'm, page, I'm on page 42, which, which is the meaning of life. What brings you along this evening? Um, it was just an accident. You just stumbled in? Yeah, pretty much. What do you think? Oh, they're fabulous. They're, they're an exaltation of youth. An exaltation for young people to get this and say, well, if they can do it, I can do it. How did you feel about contributing your whole life story? It's not my whole life story. It's a, it's a big part of my life. Um, I, it's good I did it to help out other kids that are going through the same stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. and it's hard. help other people, other kids yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah it's really hard. Erin, who's, uh, who's the editor, is so distressed that some of the... Uh, uh, and all the kids today still having trouble finding out about gays, about being gay, lesbian and transgender. And the fact that most people still perceive people to be very unhappy. Um, and, and she tried to find happy stories and, um, and really good coming out stories so that pe people could see that um, you can have a great life. Because there really wasn't these kind of books when you and I were young. Were they? they didn't exist. <laughs> the whole issue was closeted and hidden. And nobody used the word. Now it's important for the young people well, to have this. Take this, and they can use it as a paradigm, and they can say, "Well, he did it. He did it. I can do it." Is your story a happy story? Oh, well, it tells about the, it's not a happy ending, but, it, <laughs> uh, but it certainly had a bit. Well, we're talking about my teenage. Well, I being a teenager, it was very, very stressed at that time. I had a lot of trouble discussing, trying to work out who I was and how to to make my life reasonable. We're here to launch a book about coming out. Yeah. I kind of heard some of it. Being short, it's hard to see all of it. But um, well, what do you think about this whole coming out thing? It's really good. People should do it. <laughs> In June, the bands are playing the Senate change for a little yep. bit. So you have to. Have you always felt like you're kind of on the back foot as the Democrats that you're always opposed and never actually sort of getting getting anything out of it? Well, sometimes it's frustrating in that, especially when you know there's only seven of you voting one way and then sort of like 69 voting against you. Um, but I, I think uh, we're reasonably good at pushing the envelope. So we talk about issues like uh, gay and lesbian, transgendered issues. We talk about environmental issues. We talk about free education and just pushing the envelope a bit so that at some stage those issues come onto the mainstream agenda. And I think environment's the best example. We've had an anti-uranium pro-environment policy since 1977, but it's taken a while for not the community so much, but for other legislators and political parties to catch up with us. We have a sexuality discrimination bill that was introduced uh, about three years ago by former senator from Victoria, Sid Spindler, and since then uh, myself and uh, more recently Senator Andrew Bartlett, who's our gay and lesbian spokesperson from Queensland, have uh, campaigned on this bill. It's been to a committee, it's been debated, it's been discussed, but it's not actually been debated in the federal parliament because we can't get Labor or Liberal to agree to it to be debated. Okay, because I, I think I read an article that the Democrats are actually seen as being opposed to the ALP bill. Uh, the ALP bill, which is actually in the House of Reps, not the Senate, okay. is um, just a little less radical than, than what we think is required. So mm -hmm. it specifically talks about superannuation, whereas we want the whole gamut. Superannuation, all benefits, we want to oppose discrimination in employment, in society. If you're gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgendered, no one should be discriminated against. But certainly, if the Labor bill gets to the Senate, we'll support that because we'll support any step towards progress. But we'd prefer it if Labor would support 
support our bill, which we think is um, is a lot better. But we're not going to, uh, you know, basically jeopardise one bill in favour of another. Mm -hmm. We just want to make sure that uh, at the moment there's, there's sort of two separate bills in two separate houses. It'd be nice if we could get ours debated at least, if not voted on. Yeah, sure. And you're here for this book launch. Yep. How did you come to that? Well, it was very generous of Erin Shale, the editor of the book, to ask me to launch it. Uh, she asked me to write a little paragraph for the uh, for the cover and uh, then asked me to come and launch it. And I thought it was going to be this, you know, a little sort of book launch, because I've done a few book launches in my time, but I've never seen an audience <laughs> this big. Um, all this noisy, it's wonderful. <laughs> but um, I just support the work that she's doing and I think that you've got to have politicians and decision makers uh, declaring where they stand on these issues and unfortunately not a lot of politicians are prepared to do that. Yeah. Can you tell me some of the, the stories in the book that have moved you in particular? You mentioned some of them during the speech. I think most of them are moving either in an inspirational way or because of the courage, mm -hmm. even the sadness. I think the most moving, as in you will re be reduced to tears, no question, is Joy Anderson's chapter. It's the final chapter of the book and it's about her son James and uh, the fact that he killed himself and from a mother. I mean, it's so, it, it's very moving and it's insightful too. Um, but all of them are just quite extraordinary, whether it's high profile people like Bob Brown or mm -hmm. the rugby player Ian Roberts uh, or Sue Ann Post who described discrimination, difficulties in coming out and then sort of their happiness and enlightenment. But there are other people who talk about suicide and their attempted suicide, whether it's Paul Martin or, in fact, men and women in the book uh, talk about suicide attempts and that's very challenging because I was going through and I thought, okay, I'm up to about a third of the book and a third of the people in it have had, you know, described attempted suicide mm -hmm. or contemplating suicide mm -hmm. and that's just incredibly disturbing. But, you know, the figures tell us that's the case, 30% or so of youth suicides are related to sexuality. Can I just throw in the, the women in politics question? Mm -hmm. How does that, because you're, you're obviously fairly young and you're yes. a woman and you're in politics, so yes. how, do, how does that sit with you? How do you feel? I mean, are things changing since you, you've been? They're changing, but they're changing too slowly. I think that in some ways, having been the youngest woman to, to get into the parliament and still the youngest senator, um, I've probably encountered a few stereotypes and a few sort of media portrayals that um, perhaps the next youngest women won't have to encounter. Um, but uh, I guess in a way I, I'm proud to sort of be there, but I, after a while it gets a bit demeaning, some of the, the comments about being um, the baby of the parliament or the kid or mm -hmm. being commented on for what you look like or how you wear, what dresses you wear or whatever. That kind of stuff's a, a bit boring, a bit passe, um, but uh, this is it. It just shows we need more diversity in our parliaments and that means men, women, older people, younger people, indigenous, non-indigenous, different ethnic backgrounds, <laughs> gay, lesbian, transgendered, you name it. So uh, I'm a big advocate for, uh, for diversity in our representative sort of democracy. So congratulations, your book is called Inside Out. It is, yep. How did you come to this project? Um, actually a young person who attempted suicide and um, he was an ex-student of mine and um, he lost his family and I was the only person at that point in his life who was, who was able to support him. And at that point I, I decided that um, I'd had enough um, and I, I thought, look, if there's anything possible I could do to make, make a difference to even one, one person's life that I'd do that. So I basically just went out and interviewed people and got them to write their stories and um, look, I mean, I think that they just show that whether, you know, whether you're gay or straight, there really is no difference. Love is love. So Leanne, so you're one of the contributors. Now, how did that work? How did they actually get your story in this book? Uh, very complicated, just through networking with, uh, through the United Church, Dorothy McRae McMahon. The book is a, the focus is on young people and their coming out stories. Why is that important? Oh, I, I mean, I think it's terrible that people should have to deny their sexuality. So I think it's really a great thing. Was there anything like this when you were coming out? No, nothing at all. No. And so it's a good idea. It's a great idea. Actually, my mum and I do talks at um, health forums and everything about um, family love and, and positive love. And so we actually ran into Erin at a Positive Attitude luncheon. And she said that she would like our story to be in the book. 
believe you've come down from Shepparton. That's right. Yes. And now, what brings you down this evening to the Big Smoke? We, we came down with Trevor and Michael for the launching of the book because they've got a story in it. We go to our forums and do talks. Trevor and I are doing a talk about our, you know, when I first found out Trevor was gay. And then their wedding, we gave them a ceremony. Because it's very tough for parents as well, isn't it? Yes, yes, yeah, it is. We found it hard for a start, but I couldn't turn him out. Why is it you suppose that this is the first book of this kind? I mean, I know there are lots of books from the UK and from the US, but there are not so many that are specifically Australian focused. What, what's gone wrong? Why is that? Well, I don't know. I mean, when, when I was actually speaking to that young boy when he was in hospital, I looked around for material for him. And um, there's a lot of fiction, but there, there aren't a lot of autobiographical stories. And I really think that um, there's nothing can touch a person more than a real, a real story, because it's a real person. Well, there's a lot of, there was a lot of issues going on at the time with me. I mean, I was going through this, oh, what's my sex? And the death of my mother, the confusion, escape reality. So I went straight into the drug scene and did drugs for years. You know what's extraordinary is that you've actually survived it all. Well, because I got to a point where I started looking at myself in the mirror and thinking, fuck, you look really ugly. There aren't a lot of books like this for young people and their coming out stories. Why do you think that's important? Well, I think we need to educate. Yes, I think so. I think in today's society, I think they are, They're especially for kids that are coming out. Yeah, and support. Uh, and yeah, and I think all these books should go into libraries. But with writing this, it helped me to overcome the... The grief I was still keeping within me. Grief so, about what? About growing up gay in a small country town, the shit that I copped Where for. Where did you grow up? Gippsland Sale. Um, my mother died as well at that time. Like I was coming out of the closet, my mum dies. Because I think of the country in particular, like there's so little support for guys and girls in the country. No support whatsoever. Being from P Flag, yes. I can imagine that you'd appreciate the importance of a book like this. Very much so, Kay. Um, I actually wrote a little piece for the front, um, and my son Kieran has a story in there. And I think everybody who's made a contribution to this book is so incredibly courageous to be able to commit to paper their stories and that's going out and hopefully people, many, many people are going to buy this book. I would like to see it in every school library. I would like to see it in every home where there's a gay child. <laughs> is that asking too much? <laughs> but this is just the beginning. I mean, we need now to get, to get parents to read these stories, young people to read the stories. Because look, I really think they can make a difference to, to really address, I mean, the ridiculous, you know, homophobia. But, but people just need to basically, um, well, for heaven's sake, <laughs> get over it. <laughs> Is it the kind of book that PFLAG will recommend for parents? Absolutely, to absolutely. And it will be in our library, and it will certainly be on our list of recommended books to people who, um, yes, who, who want to know more about. And I think it can only bring parents and children closer together. And uh, as uh, Erin said, if some of the bigots in this world would sit down and read this, and they'd see the human face behind the people that they condemn so outrageously. So you're very proud to be involved with this oh, book? Oh, very much so. And I'm very proud of my mum and dad. Oh. They're gorgeous. I think it's lovely they came down from Shepparton. Did you grow up in Shepparton? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. With SPC? SPC, that's Is it. The fruit that's there. The fruit to the valley, that's it. <laughs> This is the panel where we talk about videos and films here on Girl Talk. Welcome. Uh, my panel guests this evening are, on, uh, to my left, there's Jay. Hi there. David and Peter. Hi. And all boys, except for me. I'm sort of, I'm sort <laughs> of, kind of a boy. <laughs> kind of boy. <laughs> yeah, the film we're talking about today is Stonewall. Um, and this is, I notice, uh, Peter, this is a joint production between BBC Films and Arena in New York. There's a lot of that happening now. Yeah. So, but first I was kind of interested, had any of you seen this movie before you'd... No. Yeah, yeah I did. I saw it a couple of years ago before it actually came out. And um, I was just, I went to, I think it was a, uh, one of the cinemas when I lived in Brisbane, <laughs> all those years ago. And I think I was at that stage where I was still coming out and thinking, wow, there's something gay in the cinema. It just amazed me. I didn't really take in exactly what the movie meant and everything else back then. And when I saw it on video um, right. when we were doing it for this review, I was sort of having a different perspective yeah. now. 
Because we should say that the film is um, precedes and is about the Stonewall yeah. riots. Stonewall is a bar in in New York, and the riots I think were in 1969. Yeah. And we what date do we actually celebrate the Stonewall riots? 28th of June. Do you think it's absurd yeah. that something that happened in New York in 1969 is um, proposed to be celebrated worldwide? I mean, how do you feel about that? That I think it's wrongly considered to be the birth of the gay rights movement worldwide, which. Right. So isn't really the case at all. I mean, people have been fighting for a lot of the century and, and for, well, time immemorial, really. But yeah. the, the, the concept that one sort of rights, which weren't really as big as the race rights or the women's mm -hmm. movement should be on that level, I think is a bit flawed. Why do you think and we do that? Why do we seek to have these, these icon events to kind of justify our existence? <laughs> well, I think Stonewall was like a turning point for um, the, our community, whereas in the um, video, because it's basically a video about... Um, La Miranda, I think her name is the. Um, the La Miranda is La the main Miranda? character. Yeah, yeah, the main character. It's basically her experience up um, till Stonewall happened, on the night that Stonewall happened. Right. And basically, I think it's um, really when this, the community really turned and became sort of violent with their protest. Right. And that's when the, the riot happened on that night. Ever till um, then, there was only um, some quiet protest where people just with banners walking around and everything else okay. and one of the other characters Matty Dean you could see that he wanted he's a to spunky say, boy yeah he's he? a spunky boy <laughs> yeah. he was the one who wanted to really break out of the show and say come on, let's stand up and be us who we are and let's mm -hmm. make it a stand up about who we are not pretending that we're straight and trying to fit into the community and then make peaceful rights right. protests yeah, so the film so kind of makes a whole point about how the movement changed yeah, its focus. Yeah, how it changed, and then one night just yeah. got violent, and I think yeah. it was sort of different from then on. Let's take a look at a clip from the movie. We'll be right back. Hey, you ain't been so far. It's Coney Island. Life's the cruise for you, bitch. Hey, matinee girl, showtime. Hey, Lindo. I'm telling you, girl, you should have came to that party. God, all the guys were there. Lollipop was there. Chucky was there with bells on. Yeah, but no balls, right? Slow down. How are you Lunch doing? Lunch on Philadelphia. Good. Take a look. Homosexual rights. Please no, join us. Help our work. Homosexuality. It's not that I tell you. Hey, watch in Philadelphia. For what? Homosexual rights. Why don't you be there? Sure. Great. Because I kind of think that things have never changed. Because we were doing the, the scene, we're actually sitting around talking about Judy Carlin. <laughs> it's a little bit sad. No, I think it's very poignant. The <laughs> film is called Stonewall. It's, it is uh, directed by... Nigel Finch, whom I think is a UK director. Now, Jay, what were your impressions of this movie? It's not necessarily <laughs> the best movie. It's, um, you know, it's, it's not a, a well-made movie. The, the acting's not, not so, so great either. But, um, so when you say acting, it didn't convince you that it was... No, no. Um, and in terms of, I, don't, I don't know much about Stonewall history, and I found that the film didn't really you know, increase my understanding of it either. Um, you know, a, a little bit, obviously, but, um, you know, there wasn't, yeah, it didn't quite go in depth enough. It didn't explain the whole sort of um, era, really, yeah. I don't think. So just on that, do you think of this as kind of one of these movies that gets lost in its own sentiment? You know, it gets, yeah, it, it indulges it was, in the whole... I mean, it was a very sort of, I mean, it, it looked at relationships. Uh, there was about uh, maybe two or three sort of relationships going on within the film, and I think it tended to concentrate a little more on that than the actual events leading up to um, to the Stonewall riots. Right. Yeah. The uh, one of the more interesting relationships I think was between the the black drag queen that was uh, one of the big black yeah. drag queens in the club, and and whom I guess was one of the club owners. Mm, kind of his name. figure. Yeah, um, he ends up killing himself in the movie. Mm. He does, which is introduced very quickly, sort of, sort of a sudden shock. Um, I'm not really sure what its point was it? in the film. Yeah. Was it, 
running throughout the film this relationship between the two which was quite tested but mm -hmm. at the same time didn't really sense any connection to Stonewall and its theme at all. Uh, I think it's part of because no, the, um, the club owner, I can't remember his name, um, who was he was at a point where, he, yes, he was in love with the guy, um, the drag Vinny. queen and everything else. Yeah. Vinny, that's right. And he um, couldn't come out. And he was at a point, like, with the society and everything where it was back in the late 60s, he couldn't come out. He could not let um, himself be seen with his partner in any sort of public scene or anything else. And then he killed himself, I think, because he did come out. He took his partner out for dinner one night. The next morning they woke up and he said, you know... Do you love me? And Dragon's like, well, that's a stupid question. And right. he said, have I told you lately that I love you? And he goes, no, you son of a bitch, you haven't. And then he turns around and shoots himself. So I think he's starting to come out, yes, I do love you, and says that and realises what his cons the uh, consequences of his actions could be in that day right. and age and like being totally despised from everything. And then he sh just shoots himself because there's no... I don't know, it was a different time back then, I guess. Yeah. You couldn't come out. Right, okay. So it was obviously a to Stonewall, it was like a turning point in the so called modern movement. But, David, you'd argue that this is a bit of a fallacy that. Yeah. Oh, well, just. I, I read a book last year called The Rise and Fall of Gay Culture by Daniel Harris, which actually has a, a very good look, a sort of revision, revisionist account of Stonewall, which I recommend to all of those who are watching. And he'd argue that case anyway. Right. I'm not too clear about it myself. I, I think one of the things that Stonewall shows is is the inherent struggle between those who want to reform the structure and those who want to sort of radically overthrow it. And between, as people are saying, those who want to just stand up in very nicely dressed and, and sort mm -hmm. of blend in the straight community and, and just have acceptance and those who want to yeah. really overthrow it, which is what the rights were. The battle between reforming and how to do it. Mm. Yeah. Which is where sort of Stonewall comes in. I mean, that's what it did. It did sort of radicalise a lot of activists around America, certainly, and then Europe and, yeah. and the rest of the world, yeah. which is the remarkable thing about Stonewall. But if you then sort of look at the struggles that were going on then in the film and where we've come to now, have we really come that far, I think is an interesting cool. question. Let's take another, another look at a clip from the movie. This the film is called Stonewall. <laughs> Weapons down, men at ease. Oh hey, bros. Bros and sisters with soul. I'm ready for action. Where do I sign? <laughs> Ladies to the left. Oh, I ain't no lady, Mr. Sir. I'm sorry. See, that's why I walk the middle of the room. Story of my damn life. Oh, I have this little old induction notice here. Hector Duarte? Well, kind of. See, I had my name legally changed. Memoranda Quarides. Reporting for duty, sir. Are we to understand you're some kind of invert? Shy? Me? <laughs> oh, Mary. Are you a homosexual? Oh, sure. At least so my boyfriend tells me. We was kind of hoping he could enlist at the same time and be posted to the same crew. Shut up. So sorry, I'm sure. Room 17? Definitely. Room 17, round the side of the building, entrance in the back. Room 17. For a psychological evaluation. Oh, my favorite. How does it document the period? the era, do you think? Because it's based, set in the late 60s. Yeah. In fact, the whole thing is sort of kicked, the whole riot itself is kicked off by Ju the whole Judy Garland uh, phenomena. How do you mm. feel about that? Can we relate to that now as 90s queens? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I think if Madonna died, we'd be sad, but I don't think we'll keep oh, Madonna. Right. Oh, Madonna. <laughs> so Madonna is the, is the next Judy Garland. Yeah, she's is. the Judy Garland of this oh, era. Wow. Gee. How, it's interesting too, that, as you were saying before in the break, about how Mardi Gras started with a riot as well, and now 20 years from, on from that, it's, it's sort of just mainly a party and a bit of an arts festival. And, <laughs> and actually, it was interesting, I was in New York last year at the Stonewall anniversary, and um, now it's just become a big party as well. They have a similar march to Mardi Gras, but not quite as right. theatrical, and then just a big dance party on the, on the wharf there. Yeah. So it's sort of interesting that it's sort of come you know, two decades on from the riots in Sydney and about three from those in, in New York, and 
and we celebrate them through a party, whereas well, not, not some sort of remembering the critical gains. Yeah, it makes you wonder if people actually remember what um, Stonewall, even Mardi Gras, was about originally, right. because as we were saying during the break, that I didn't even know that Mardi Gras started up through a riot. Right. So it's almost like a, a celebration of kind of the darker sort of period of, yeah. of, of gay history. Yeah. I just wonder, is that, do you think that is, is that a function of these kind of movies to, to just remind us of the, the historical roots of these events? Mm. Do you I think? think? I think it is, but I think in this particular example it didn't work very well. I okay. don't think this film so, really did that. All right. So I'm just interested in that. So I have the same impression that it was a little bit cardboard cut out y. And, uh, because I guess I'm seeing it from the inside, from the drag scene on the inside, and that wasn't a scene that I recognised. So what, why is that? Is, is it a performance thing? I mean, are these the kind of movies that should go out and actually employ... Last week we looked at Paris is Burning as, like, the real thing. This, this film was acted by people who were acting drag queens. Is it a performance thing that doesn't try and make it so real for you all? Perhaps it's trying to appeal to an audience on, on a performance where everyone's yeah. trying to get people that are documentary in a traditional sense, wouldn't normally do. Mm. But I, in, in doing that, it's, it's sort of left the, the core elements of what Stonewall was about. Mm. And we have this, this sort of comical tale of a, of, a, of a drag queen who lives her existence as a woman, really, although yeah. hasn't had any... Because a great deal of time was spent, you know, the whole mm. kind of initiating into the drag scene, you know. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So that was a whole big yeah. scenario around that. It's forgetting it was, the prejudice and... Yeah. Then, it was to relate to those who want to know about Stonewall but put it in a very like, performance um, kind of genre and you tend to lose a bit of the plot what Stonewall was actually about. Okay. Well, I did. I didn't really, I still don't fully understand what Stonewall was about but I know it's about some sort of right. Right. Um, but it was just mainly entertaining. Let's introduce you. We've run out of time again. Yeah. Oh, gosh, we could talk forever about these movies, couldn't we? <laughs> this is our video review segment of Girl Talk. Thanks for joining us. We do get our films from Alternative video there in Elston Week. So thank you and pop along there to have a great collection. And we'll be back next week with some more films. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, see you then. <laughs>